This is Duke University. Good afternoon, everyone. We've got a few folks coming in, so if you could find your seats, that would be great. So I'm Brad Fox. I'm the Associate Dean of Master's Programs here at the Pratt School of Engineering. And on behalf of the Pratt School of Engineering, I wanted to welcome our graduates, their friends and family, our faculty and staff to the 2018 Master of Engineering Management Hooding and Diploma Ceremony. Woo! <laughs> So this event is truly a celebration of all the hard work that our students have put into earning this degree. And so since it is a celebration, let's give all of them a round of applause. And although the students are kind of the central theme for most of this weekend, I think all of them would recognize that they would not be here today without the support of family and friends. And so I'd ask our students to show their gratitude to family and friends for all the support they've given. So there are a number of graduation events that occur throughout the weekend. I can uh, clearly say that this is my favorite event. Um, certainly you can see the enthusiasm in the crowd and the excitement our students have for finally achieving uh, and earn their degree. It's also a great opportunity for us to hear from student speaker, see a little bit of the student life here. It is really just a celebration of what has been a fantastic year or year and a half for so many of our students. In today's ceremony, I want to talk a little bit about what, what's going on here today. So we do two things in this ceremony. First, we um, give out a symbolic degree. Many of their students may have already picked up their degree or they actually graduated in December and have that um, as well. So we give a symbolic degree. But the other thing that we do today is it's a hooding ceremony. And so I wanted to speak for a li little minute to say, What's this all about? What's the history of this? And why is this so, such a significant part of the graduation weekend? And so if you look at the uh, uh, kind of elaborate regalia that the faculty are wearing, you can see this is, uh, well, hopefully you know this is not our normal everyday dress, right? This is, <laughs> this is for special occasions. Um, but at one time during the Middle Ages, this was kind of everyday dress. And the hoods that the academics wore really reflected their stature and their background in the community. And so uh, universities across the country continue that tradition. And so you will see a wide variety of different um, academic attire, colors, all symbolizing the diversity of educational programs and schools that people have gone, have gone to. And so in today's hooding ceremony, you'll notice that uh, our graduates have a hood that has an orange collar. And so that orange collar represents engineering. Uh, you may see uh, other colors throughout the weekend, but if you see orange, at least that particular color orange, you know that those are graduates of the engineering school. The other thing that you will notice about the graduates is that all of us have different colors inside our hood. And this represents your graduate institution. Um, I did, was not fortunate enough to go to Duke, and so inside my hood is not blue and white. Uh, but our students will all have blue and white inside their hoods. But as you see people throughout the weekend, you'll see a wide variety of colors. Again, this represents the diversity of students and thought that have come here in this community. But we're giving out a hood today that's orange with blue and white chevrons. And that's because you are earning a degree from Duke University. And congratulations. So at this time, I want to introduce Professor Greg Hopper. Uh, many of the students in the room have had Professor Hopper. He teaches competitive strategy for us, and he's gonna share a few thoughts. Good afternoon. I'm gonna ask you a question, and those of you who've had my class know the appropriate way to answer. How are you doing? Never been better, that's right. Greetings, graduates. 
family members, students, staff, and fellow faculty. It is an honor to be here today with you to celebrate this momentous occasion. It's been an honor and a pleasure for me to be able to share my, strategy, my passion for strategy with so many of you. And in the spirit of CompStrat, I thought I'd adopt a framework from the class to structure my remarks today. It is not a two by two matrix. I've created what I call the career model canvas based on the business model canvas. It comes with full apologies to Alex Osterwalder and Yves Pigneux. Kind of a fun fact, Dr. Osterwalder came up with the idea for the BMC during his PhD work. The CMC has the same nine blocks, value proposition, customer segments, customer relationship, channels, key resources, key activities, and key partnerships. The two financial-ish boxes, uh, costs and revenue, become your personal balance sheet of experience. As usual, let's start with your personal value proposition. This is the unique set of knowledge, skills, and abilities that make up you. The MEM program creates business-savvy engineers shaped like a Tesla logo. <laughs> I've said many times that I wish this program had been around when I was an early career engineer and also when I was a hiring manager. The combination of business skills you learn here layered on top of an engineering foundation is ideal for leadership in an increasingly technology-driven world. The structure of the program enables you to draw from a wide variety of electives, building a strong, diverse knowledge base. Who are your customers in this model? You'll have many. Your managers, of course, your boss, your peers and coworkers, ultimately, your direct reports. If you're an entrepreneur, you'll have actual paying customers, I hope. <laughs> but keep in mind the words of very smart guy, Ted Levitt. Customers are unpredictable, varied, fickle, stupid, short-sighted, stubborn, and generally bothersome. I hope you never have a boss like this, but as we say in CompStrat, Dilbert is a documentary. <laughs> but he continued on, an industry and a job begins with the customer and his or her needs, not with a patent, a raw material, or a selling skill. As you look to your next stop on life's journey, you're probably being hired to do an actual job. But remember that there are functional, emotional and social aspects of the job. And that's not just about skill. Figure out what your employer's pains are in getting their job done and what gains you can create over and above the just meeting requirements. Much of your success will be due to the relationships that you develop. And your relationship with your customers is a very, very important part of the career model canvas. One of my favorite business quotes comes from when I was the interim chief operating officer for about a 100 person company. She was a director of marketing who reported directly to me and she said that she viewed her job to figure out what kept me and my boss awake at night and make sure those things didn't happen. That is a real game creator right there. And when you become a manager for the first time, you'll realize how radically different that job is from being an individual contributor. I urge you to develop a guiding philosophy of managing. Mine is that I, that I view one of a manager's core duties to be a steward of talent. People will report to you for a relatively short time, maybe a few years. When they depart, I feel that they should be more talented than they were when they joined you. My job isn't to exploit skills, it's to develop and build them. Your channels in the, in the CMC are your networks, professional and social. Leverage LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Meetup. Notice what I didn't say. Did I did not say Snap. I did not say Snap. More importantly, develop personal relationships with people inside and outside your company. Go to events. Duke has an amazing alumni network. When I was traveling to the Bay Area fairly frequently, it was the highlight of each trip to connect with former students who were working out in the Valley. These four blocks are what I think of as the value development and delivery side of the CMC. Let's move over to the three boxes on the left, the internal elements. The key resources you bring to your career are your mission, vision, and values. Also, your professionalism your work ethic, your grit, to quote Angela Duckworth, authenticity, flexibility, open-mindedness. Key resources also include your personality, your sense of humor, and increasingly as you progress through life, your experiences. In a single word, your character. And empathy. The Harvard Business Review, which I also highly recommend as a key resource, had a recent article called, To Change Someone's Mind, Stop Talking and Listen. It has been observed that we have two ears and one mouth, and that should be a guide to the proper operating ratio of those two organs. 
And just yesterday, I saw a quote that's attributed to the Dalai Lama. And I did research it, and I can't find out where or when he said it, but if you're going to attribute a quote like this to somebody, the Dalai Lama is really good. <laughs> when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. Key activities. I urge you to make lifelong learning one of your key activities. Read a lot, or listen to podcasts or audiobooks if that's your thing. Learn about things that you don't know much about. Keep broadening that Tesla logo. Get out of the echo chamber, and this is particularly important if you're going to go work in Silicon Valley. I find that I'm much more productive when I'm learning along with advising. My recent experience in the agriculture is a case in point. I have learned so much at the same time I was teaching strategy skills. Something I love about our program, too. I've learned so much from you in the conversations we have, both inside and outside of class. I'd urge you to build an emergent strategy for your career. Have goals, but be flexible and take advantage of opportunities as they present themselves. Several years ago, Amin gave the student remarks here, and, heard, and in them he urged his fellow graduates to be compassionate. I agree, and I'll go a step farther and steal a recurring line from the movie Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The third installment of that series, by the way, just entered pre-production, but I digress. <laughs> from them, they say, be excellent to each other. Your key partners, many of them are here today, your family, your friends, your spouses. You may even get lucky like me and find a soulmate. That, that wasn't in here. She's been proof proofreading this the whole time. <laughs> I, and I, I, I knew I was going to say that, but I didn't want to put it in her. So, so it, may, it may come as a surprise, but. <laughs> even your pets. Many of you know about my little buddy Arno. Alex Romero's two beagles, gin and tonic, even have their own Facebook page. Your key partners are the people with whom you will share your passions, your interests, your adventures. They are special to you and you to them. Make sure to nurture these special relationships. These are also the people that you'll depend on when life hands you some setbacks or you have experiences that affect you negatively. That's the liability side of the personal balance sheet. I call this the lemons box. One common lemon in our, in our society is re restructuring. It has, unfortunately, become commonplace. When businesses have poor strategies, or external conditions change unpredictably, or funding fails to materialize, all these events can unfortunately lead to job loss. I was a second level manager with about 80 people reporting to me in 1993 when IBM set the record, which still stands, with 60,000 people laid off in a single event. To put that in perspective, that's 50% more people than will fit in Wallace Wade Stadium. Hardest thing I've ever had to do in my professional career was sit across the table from somebody and tell them that for no fault of their own, they no longer had a job. And I've been on the other side of the desk, too. The following year, IBM eliminated my department. My boss was crying as she gave me the news, which I fully expected. The, the news, not the crying. <laughs> but I understood. So fully did I expect it, in fact, that I had spent the previous month helping my employees get ready for it with constant resume reviews and constant mock interviews. Sound familiar? I wanted them to be first to apply for new positions if the axe dropped. It did, they were, and they had new jobs two weeks in, in, after the layoff. And I found a position down here at RTP, which led me to here. For those of you who don't know, my dad was an IBMer. I went to college on an IBM scholarship. I had four consecutive internships with IBM and was offered a full-time position at the end of the last one. I never even interviewed anywhere else. I planned on working there for 30 years and retiring with full pension and full health benefits. I had a rock-solid, deliberate strategy. <laughs> and when it failed, somehow I didn't have total control of all the events that led up to that. It was an emotional experience, but I made a decision. I decided that I didn't work for anyone. I was an independent contractor working for me with, as I now call it, a personal value proposition. I may choose to contract my services with companies or co-found a startup, which I did, or go into consulting, which I did, or become a professor, which obviously did. These setbacks, more accurately, the way you deal with them, will exhibit your character. As Robert Freeman said, character is not made in a crisis, only exhibited. But after the crisis passes, such experiences do shape your character. Which brings me to the final box, the assets on your personal balance sheet, the rewards box. It contains all of the intrinsic and extrinsic rewards that you will collect throughout your career. This includes money, but more importantly, satisfaction, contribution, recognition, 
achievement, accomplishment, and much, much more. Perhaps there will be other advanced degrees. Perhaps you'll have opportunities to go abroad. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> Thank you, I was worried that wouldn't work. And perhaps you will have the opportunity to experience the joy of the most rewarding part of my professional career, and that is to teach the next generation of leaders. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today, and I wish that you will all sail in blue oceans that are the bluest of blue, blue Duke Blue Devil Blue. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce a very recent Cobb Stratian, Nate Kisla. All right, hello everyone. My name is Nate Kisla. Uh, Tim Cook was busy today. A uh, Colombian, an Indian, an American, a Kiwi, a Korean, and a Nigerian walk into a bar. This is either the opening to a joke or a carload of MEMers unloading into downtown Durham on a Friday night. <laughs> now, this isn't truly representative of our program because guaranteed at least half of us forgot IDs and we never got in. <laughs> Safe to say, I appreciated our program's diversity more than Durham's bartenders and doormen. The friends I've made here have introduced me to cultures from around the world in ways my stomach and I are forever grateful. <laughs> I tried samosas, ramen, paneer, pavlova, Chinese candy plum, and some Russian vodka alongside Indian and Venezuelan rums. The food made sure I was well-fueled for learning, and the spirit served an equally essential but entirely opposite function. More important than the food and drink we shared were the bits of culture and insight exchanged over these meals and late nights. I always appreciated learning new words and other languages from my friends who shared them, and none of them are appropriate for me to say in front of our families. <laughs> so, I'll continue in English. Beyond my classmates' multilingual mastery, I've been continuously amazed by everything we've accomplished in one short year. Members of our class have started drone companies, encouraged technology education in Nigeria, birthed the finance podcast, stood front row to watch Duke basketball beat that baby blue team from down the street, earned jobs at top consulting firms, designed water pipelines in Madagascar, undertaken entrepreneurial endeavors, provided insights used to pitch an autonomous vehicle company to Silicon Valley VCs, earned the Henry A. Knox Award as the number one field artillery battery in the entire US Army. And most impressive of all for a group of engineers, we even survived three hours of talking about our feelings every week in management. <laughs> Um, speaking of feelings, I cried the day I got into Duke. Mostly tears of joy because the admission somehow messed up and let me in. <laughs> There's probably a Kate Nisla out there still wondering if Duke's ever going to get back to her. <laughs> but given our accomplishments this past year, our admissions team clearly got a lot right. So my first thank you is to Paige Anderson, Susan Brown, and the faculty and staff that contribute to the admissions process. Next, I want to thank the people who managed to corral the wily bunch that admissions let in. Bridget Fletcher for laying down the law. <laughs> Ian, Turner, Ian Turnage Butterbaugh for sorting out the heck that is class registration. <laughs> and Latondra Murray for hyping us all up in strengths coaching. Thank you to Carrie Udell and Carolyn Gilbert for joining the team. We're happy to be the first batch you send off, but I don't know if you know quite what you've gotten yourselves into. <laughs> Thank you to Brad Fox and Jeff Glass, and also, you're welcome, because you're gonna be able to tell your friends that you know us once we're, we make up half of this Fortune 500 C-suite. 
Thank you to our incredible career services team, Jenny Sloop Johnson, Camille Hartz, and Aaron Carlini for helping us find awesome jobs that will help us pay off our awesome loans. <laughs> On a note completely unrelated to loans, thank you to all of our parents, family members, and significant others for supporting us. Thank you to our professors for teaching, inspiring, challenging, mentoring, and at times working us harder than we'd ever asked for so that we ended up smarter, more persistent, and with more late night food receipts than anyone should ever have. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank the MEM class of 2018. Your endeavors, insights, and friendships inspire me daily. I know each and every one of you has an incredible future in store, and I can't wait to see what we accomplish. So go, do great things, stay in touch, and I love you all. Thank you. All right, and now we have an opportunity to see a slideshow prepared by our students.
uh, Agarwal, who put that together. It was really great. I'd like to ask our first row of graduates to please stand and line up. Graduates today will be hooded by Dr. Latondra Murray. That's right. Nathaniel Corwin Kisla. Randolph Adams Frank III. Salvador Samuel Mascarenas IV. Alexander Owen Cheesebra. Kevin Raynor Gunkel. Vanit Raju. <laughs> Dev Patel. Morgan Elizabeth Feeney. <laughs> Rushab Shah. Eric William Anderson. Sunan Azim. Raghav Kosla. Natalia Arango Landonio. <laughs> Amulia Sheshidri. Rajul Razdan. Adarsh Subramanian. Mohammed Abdul Rahman. <laughs> Shiv Sagar Raghavindra. <laughs> Barani Daharan Subramani.
Srivatsan Narayanan. Chinmay Aznakor. Shri Sindhura Komenini. Kir Narang. Asanatu Mahamadu Deet Tapa Sise. <laughs> Hariharan Rajesh Banu. Dongda Wong. <laughs> ya Song Jiu. Jiang, Kevin, Gu. <laughs> Zhe, Shu, Yang. <laughs> Shuang, Jiang. Hao Tian Leong <laughs> Yi Chan Li Adarsh Abhinav. <laughs> Svarnik. Raunak Babsaur. <laughs> Jay Shri Rajasekaran. Divya Kacholia. <laughs> Natish Gurg. Animesh Roy. <laughs> Q 
Claudette Nicole Nitrar. Sagar Ramrakiani. Pallavi Ravi Shankar Shrirama. Elmira Fide Levnia Valianova. Akil Pramod Patvardhan. Bastien Bonicel. <laughs> Tyler Kenneth Roth. Nikita Cabra. <laughs> Padmaja Gohil. Natisha Vishwanath. <laughs> Anega Suchitra. Radha Mishra. <laughs> Haider Ahmad. Kawaja Harris Nadim. <laughs> Subhan Zahid Mansoor. <laughs> Abhinav Shukla. Hannah Rachel Fibus. Christopher Joseph Icaza. Sai Anurag Chala. Shruti Mandalap.
Michael Angelo Knowles. Jong Sang Lee. Ivoni Efrosini Damianidu. <laughs> Jesse Carolina Lozada Picon. Johnny Dada. <laughs> Rodrigo Jose Olaquiaga Calcano. El Mokdad. <laughs> Aniket Mohanti. Vincent Michael Pelleggi. <laughs> Samurth Mishra. <laughs> Megha Agarwal. Rashmi Nayak. <laughs> Raksha Rajagopalan. Versha Rangaswamy. <laughs> Shweta Shrikant. Nibolisa Awanofu. <laughs> Zachary Austin Kramer. Samved Burha. <laughs> Saurabh Bernval.
Lakshmi Radula Batibrolo. Saket Sai Vinakota. Jing Ting Xiong. Shreya Narla. Sudeep Narsipur. Abhishek Madori. Praveen Kaushik. <laughs> Divyanshu Pandey. Hinal Mistry <laughs> Gauri Punekar Sachin Londe Shantanu Sharma Ashwin Sathumadhavan Charaparambil. <laughs> Saurabh Naukudkar. <laughs> Akash Shambakar. Sneha Prakesh Mekle. Harish Gaud Madagauni. <laughs> Shaunak Gike.
Laksh Dar. Ge Tiang. Yi Fei Li. Victor Shu. Arti Sujit Salyankor. Midhun Atikal. Javed Tajudin. Ankit Mahadik. Siddharth Anil Kumar Gugale. <laughs> Mohamed Sebti. Tasapan Asfanand. <laughs> Nasit Jonkitipong. All right, let's have one another huge round of applause for all of our graduates. <laughs> and how about one more for Hooder extraordinaire, Dr. Latondra Murray? <laughs> I'd now like to invite our new Director of Graduate Student Programs and Services, Dr. Deb Wojcik. Thank you, Bridget, and thank you, graduates, family, and friends for allowing me to be part of such a momentous and exciting celebration. I would love to do one more great big round of applause for our graduates. To round out our program, Dr. Fox started by talking about the regalia and its significance. And what I'd like you to do is take that last piece, your tassel is on your right, move it to the left to signify that your time as a student is finished. But, there is a big but. Your time at Duke and part of the Duke family will be forever. As was noted, 
as was noted in your slideshow, you are forever Duke. And as a fellow alum, I am thrilled to welcome you into the family of Duke alumni. We are everywhere, we are loyal, and we are proud. And I am proud of all of you.
produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.